So I've had a few questions come in from the Sutton Chamber of Commerce Executive Committee. With what's going on in the high streets in and around Birmingham, you know, what do you see as being the future around there? Yeah, we've all seen the really devastating impact that COVID-19 and the, the closures of high streets and businesses have had during this time and on top of many challenges that high streets have faced over the years. But I think there's a couple of things that we can do both at a local level and where we need national government intervention to really support those high street businesses, those retailers, those hospitality businesses that sort of the lifeblood of communities make these places so great to live, work and visit. The first is what we can do. So along every stage of the roadmap, as businesses start to reopen, we can get out there and support our local businesses. You know, really think about how we can champion, support, visit those local businesses as they reopen and spend some of our hard earned money helping those lovely businesses that make our areas so great to live in. And also at the same time, helping them as they go through. You know, hospitality businesses in particular are gonna be opening under quite strict restrictions things are going to look a little bit different, you know, service is going to be different, they're going to be under a lot of pressure to get things right and get things right in a COVID secure way. And as individuals, we can all play our part by making sure the groups that we go out to these places with are supportive of that and support these business owners in, a, you know, this new way of working. And also as a chamber, we're really looking forward to at each stage of the roadmap, shouting loudly and proudly about our members, really promoting them as they reopen at each stage. Then when it comes to national government, there are a number of interventions that could be put in place. The top one I'll mention though is business rates reform. You know, it was an outdated tax of bricks and mortar long before COVID-19 came along, but it's really thrown into sharp relief how that tax really disadvantages businesses that are on high rent areas like high streets and are reliant on brick and mortar premises. So a really fundamental reform of that is urgently needed to support high streets moving forwards. So Henrietta, you're really leading the way for women in business. So how do you feel that will influence the next generation? Yeah, I think one of the challenges we have as a region is we're one of the youngest and most diverse regions in, in the country. And yet, even though there are individual leaders who are absolutely incredible across the city region and the business community, civic community and beyond, taken as a whole, there's no denying that the leadership of our region doesn't reflect the population. You know, I'm obviously only one cog in this uh, great big wheel, but I certainly intend to be a very noisy cog. Uh, stand up for the needs to look at our leadership, how we address supporting the next generation of talent into these positions and also personally the role that I can play now I'm in the leadership position of acting as an advocate, supporting those behind me, you know, making sure I push down the ladder behind me, help people up uh, as we move through the, the coming years and hopefully drive that greater diversity and leadership across the region. Henrietta, what do you hope to achieve in your first 100 days? Yeah, during my first 100 days in the role, there's definitely a lot of focus on keeping up the momentum. As uh, you've probably noticed, there's quite a lot going on for businesses at the moment. Everything from supporting businesses with the impact of Brexit, through to the implementation of the government's roadmap, supporting our members every step of the way, but also really championing them and shouting about their return to business. You know, those that have been closed during this time or really impacted by COVID-19 restrictions. So really keeping on that front foot of supporting businesses. Also want to make sure that we're celebrating key moments coming down the line when it's not far off one year to the Commonwealth Games, for instance. And of course, supporting the team as like every business across the country, we figure out how the future of work is going to look and how we support our team and bring them with us. So what do you see as your top three opportunities to help Birmingham businesses and how will the Chamber get involved? I think there's some clear big ones, you know, the first is of course Commonwealth Games coming up in 2022, fantastic opportunity to really re-kickstart really that visitor economy for the region. And HS2, the biggest investment in infrastructure for a generation, a true transformational project for the region. And of course the environmental sustainability agenda, you know, there's a real opportunity for Birmingham and the wider region to become leaders in that future green economy. And the Chamber, the role we'll play in this, is really acting as a gateway to all of those opportunities. A convener, helping businesses share best practice, sharing information on how our members can get involved in key projects, key opportunities, and generally opening up that access to local business to these future agendas. So what do you see as your biggest challenge in the next 12 months? I honestly see my biggest challenge is keeping the headspace to think and plan ahead. You know, it's that common cliche of it's really hard to find time to work on the business and not just in the business. And at the moment, with the sort of multiplicity of factors hitting businesses, hitting the chamber, 
you know, the amount of change and the amount of different announcements week by week, etc. It can be quite easy to just settle into being reactive. It's something I'm going to need to work hard to do and fight to keep the space full. Is having that headspace with our team at the chamber to really plan ahead, to decide what we want the future to look like and put those plans in place to get us there. So do you have any burning desire to change anything in your first few months in the, in the role? To be honest, I really see almost my first year in the role as evolution rather than revolution. The team have been working at an incredible pace over the past 12 months and there's still a lot more to do and a lot more to get through in our current plans and strategies. So rather than look to make any sweeping changes and add to that challenge of managing day to day on top of board priorities, I really want to make sure that I'm supporting the team and doing what we do really brilliantly well. But also we're planning a few little things that we'll be announcing in the near future, uh, which are improvements on the activity that we've been doing to date. Henrietta, thank you very much for your time. Uh, it's been fantastic to find out more about your plans for the Chamber. Oh, thank you very much for having me along.